So today I want to show you these original lab research papers about magnesium supplements and how that can impact your heart. So when I first moved to Boston, again, I had some heart problems, heart palpitations. The doctors were mystified. And eventually I discovered that magnesium resolved my issues. So I started supplementing magnesium and you probably should too. Let's look at the literature. 2001, I have got this paper here from Magnesium Research. It's cited all the time. It's called Bioavailability of U.S. Commercial Magnesium Preparations. It's about magnesium supplements. Which type should you have? There's citrate, there's magnesium aspartate, there's magnesium oxide. I've read someplace that magnesium oxide can harm your heart. Is that true? By the way, I don't think it is. I can't find anything that says that, but let's look at the research. Bioavailability was measured. What does that mean? That means uptake, how much magnesium your body is taking. That's what they're measuring in this study, using different types of magnesium supplements. And here's kind of the key point that they say. Magnesium oxide, only 4% was taken up, was bioavailable compared to significantly higher levels of magnesium chloride, lactate, and aspartate. Significantly higher levels. What does that mean? They don't give you the number there. So a lot of people, they cite this paper and say, yeah, magnesium oxide is lousy. It only gets taken in about 4%, which is what this study says, right? Well, let's look into it. So there's a couple problems. There's a lot of problems with the study. I don't like this study. Um, they used... Some, in some cases, with magnesium oxide, they used capsules. With magnesium chloride, they used pills. With magnesium lact lactate, they used tablets. They used all these different forms of magnesium, so they weren't really comparing apples to apples. And then they, they took it three times a day for oxide, two times a day for cl magnesium chloride, three times a day for me. They took it different. They had the experimental, the people in the experiment taking it different amounts per day, which is going to alter the magnesium uptake. So it's a lousy experiment, it's a bad experiment. And then they concluded that oxide, magnesium oxide, four, only 4% 4 was taken up. Whereas with, magnesium, with all these other types of magnesium, between 9 and 11% were taken up. And I think there was one more. Yeah, so, so they say the other interesting thing in their conclusion, they say the low absorption we observed with magnesium oxide, that's 4%, is identical to that observed in prior studies of magnesium sulfate bioavailable. In other words, other forms of magnesium also only get taken up at these low levels, but people blow it out of proportion because they see the, the abstract, they see the introduction from this study that says, yeah, magnesium oxide is only 4%, but then they forget, yeah, there's these other forms, and if you do a good study on them, they're not that well taken up by your body. Your body doesn't take up that much. Doesn't mean it's not good for you, but you know, it's something to keep in mind. I don't think magnesium oxide is that bad. I think any of these forms are okay. And here's the key, right? You have to experiment yourself because you will get loose stools if you take too much magnesium. And so you have to personally figure out how much magnesium you should be taking and which forms cause looser stools in you. That's one of the reasons I prefer magnesium citrate it's, it works well for me, but I don't think there's a problem with cheaper magnesium oxide. Let's go to 2012, the same journal, Magnesium Research. This paper is called Comparison of Magnesium Status Using X-Ray Dispersion Analysis Following Magnesium Oxide and Magnesium Citrate Treatment of Healthy Subjects. All right, so they say, yeah, magnesium content in food consumed in the Western world is steadily decreasing. We've been talking about that. And they're going to look at citrate versus oxide, magnesium supplements. And here's what's crazy to me. Okay, this is 2012. That other paper was 2001. So in this paper, they dosed people with magnesium oxide at 500 milligrams per day. But with magnesium citrate, they only gave people about 300 milligrams per day. So almost half. And then they did this for a month. And then they, they looked, they measured it. And essentially they said magnesium oxide rather than magnesium citrate, significantly increased, but both imp essentially improved the health of the subjects. So in other words, they were both getting some benefits from the magnesium, 
but in the measurements they could only find the magnesium oxide. Well, yeah, that's because they were almost doubling the dose in magnesium oxide. So they're actually arguing magnesium oxide is better for you. But I don't think, I wouldn't go that direction either myself. I would just say it's all those supplements, oxide, citrate, aspartate, they're good. You just have to find the correct dose for yourself. Let's look 2009 real fast. This one, this paper is published in the American Journal of Medical Science. And it's called Neurogenic Inflammation and Cardiac Dysfunction Heart Problems Due to Hypomagnesemia. And that just means low magnesium. Low magnesium. And the only thing I want to say here is I just want to read this line. Again, this relates to me and my heart palpitations, my heart problems. Clinical hypomagnesemia, low magnesium, has been associated with a higher incidence of arrhythmias, vasospasms, sudden death with congestive heart failure, and acute myocardial infarction. In other words, a whole bunch of heart problems. Low magnesium, heart problems. Why? Actually, I have this book. It's on my Kindle. It's called The Magnesium Miracle. And this is interesting. In here, she doesn't cite uh, reference. She's a scientist. The author, Carolyn Dean, is an MD. And she's got good science in this book, Magnesium Miracle. And she says... The heart, specifically the left ventricle, has the highest amount of magnesium in the whole body. And I don't doubt her. I don't see a citation there. I would like to see a citation, but I don't. But the heart has the most magnesium in the whole body, especially the left ventricle, which is real interesting to me because there's a fatty acid protein I used to study called CD36 that's also highly, highly expressed in the left ventricle, specifically in the heart. Kind of a side topic. Let's move on. This is the Journal of Nutrients, and the paper is called Magnesium Levels in Drinking Water and Coronary Heart Disease Mortality Risk. A meta-analysis. Drinking water, magnesium, 2016. What do they find? Okay, they're looking at CHD, coronary heart disease, and they found drinking water magnesium level was significantly inversely associated, inversely associated with coronary heart mortality. In other words, when there's lower magnesium in the water, there's higher coronary heart problems. There's high, essentially higher heart attacks. And when there's more magnesium, there's less heart attacks. It's that simple. And then they even said post-mortem studies, after people died, they looked at their, they, who suddenly died from cardiac heart disease, were found significantly lower levels of magnesium in uninfarcted heart muscle. They found less magnesium in the actual heart. So it's clear you've got to supplement magnesium if you want a healthy heart, especially with the low quality. This is the importance of that soil study we looked at and how our soil nutrition is diminishing. It's so important. So you've got to supplement magnesium. The type of magnesium doesn't matter that much. It, appears, it seems that oxide is good. Magnesium citrate is good. Um, Natural Calm is the brand that I use. It's good. I don't get any money from that. And you should definitely supplement it and experiment for what works on what works for you.